الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وارحم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت وسلمت ورحمت وباركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to whom belongs infinite thanks We thank him for his countless bounties on us The greatest of which is the grace that he has bestowed on us guiding us to the path of al-Islam The only grace, the only bounty by which we shall not regret being born to the world the only grace, the only bounty which shall give our lives some meaning. The only grace, the only bounty upon which we rest our hope somehow in the hereafter. And we believe that Allah does not fail in his promises. We thank Allah as well on his other countless bounties that we may never be able to enumerate. Allah says in the glorious Quran, وَإِن تَعُودُ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إن الإنسان لا ظلوم كفار وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحسوها إن الإنسان لا ظلوم كفار Where do we want to start? How many of his bounties have we even been able to appreciate or recognize? So many are they that the ones we can't even capture are far more and greater in value than the little ones we can enumerate and count. But Allah concludes, but it's unfortunate that man is indeed a wicked and an and ingrate species of creatures. We pray Allah to count us among the few ones who will be grateful. And we pray Allah to accept our thanks and count us among uh, the grateful and the thankful ones. As we thank Allah, we beseech Allah as well to continue to shower his blessings endlessly on the soul of our noble prophet, teacher, guide, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his noble companions and the entirety of his household, and all the believers who continue to tread this clear path till Allah inherits the heavens and the earth. Verily, whomever Allah has guided, none can mislead. And whomever Allah has left to stray on the wrong path, none can guide as well except Allah. The most truthful of all sins is the saying of Allah as enshrined in the glorious Quran. And the best of all precepts that one may follow that can guarantee guidance, that can guarantee success in the hereafter, is no other precept than that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For that we pray Allah to continue to bless our Prophet, his household, his companions, and to count us all among those who will be partakers with the success of the, of the Prophet. On that day when Allah has vowed, يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا On that day, describing the hereafter, 
It's a day when Allah shall not subject Muhammad sallam, to any disgrace or humiliation. So also will be honored along with him, those who have also believed along with him. We pray as Allah honors the Prophet in the day of Qiyamah, may we also be partakers in that honor. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Inshallah, I will be greeting us firstly. That should be very expensive missing that protocol to salute ourselves in the prescribed salutation of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And once again, I join my chairman welcoming you, us all, especially those of us who may be having their first contact with Cleopatra Islamic Center. We've had essentially what we represent and um, basically what we are here for is how to prosecute da'wah the way and manner the Prophet ﷺ in our own way had done. I mean, using those very potent instrumentalities which the Prophet ﷺ really explored. It's very elementary what the state of the Arabian Peninsula was before Muhammad Sallallahu That was a state which, uh, an impression of which was captured in a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu was saying that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was literally lamenting that inni khalaqtu ibadi hunafa. I have created my creatures, my servant, I've created them in the best state of purity on the best state of, 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 of uh, Iman. But at some point, they got exposed to the various uh, agents of shaitan, whether in form of man or in form of institutions, who beguiled mankind away from the path of Allah. Till man began to subscribe to authorities which Allah has not sanctioned, ideologies which Allah has not approved of. Even Man chose for them for himself deities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never agreed. At that point, Famaqatahum, and this is very key. Allah says he became very angry to all that were living then. In fact, what Allah was expressing literally was hatred for the species of mankind. Except for few ones, Illa Baqaya min Ahl Kitab. Imagine a situation when all that constituted human beings at that time were disgusting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a creature. Maqatahum. Allah related with them with hatred and despise. That was the point at which the rahmah of the universe was raised. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is to tell you the extent to which people have become so grossly immersed in all sorts of things that could ordinarily made man, uh, have made mandatory on them the hatred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I could recall that as a child, between Maghrib and Isha, we used to hear the muadzins of the neighborhood mosques where we grew. Part of the prayers they would always make every day would be, Laya salatu. May Allah extinguish the fire of the idolaters, debase the innovations and heresies of shaitan, and then exalt and elevate the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To me, that prayer has taken too long a time to be accepted because we are still battling with it. It appears we are still paying lip service to this, if indeed we are serious. You could recall, tell stories, you, we've all had stories about how the companions used to bury their children alive. How they used to store intoxicants in their houses in barrels, not in bottles. You can go on and on. But these were the same people that were transformed virtually into the best set of mankind you can ever imagine. Sometimes when you read about the biography of the companions of the Prophet you would wonder, were these once human beings? In terms of the level of piety they exhibited, in terms of the level of loyalty they exhibited to the Prophet So what then was the magic? I think the magic 
were these four instruments the prophet used, which were enum enumerated in Surah to Juma. And this, I believe, is what is lacking in most of the dawah efforts that people are, are doing today. The first. <coughs> Yatlu alayhim ayati. Allah has raised fil ummiyina from a group, a, a people that were unlettered, that were uncivilized. That ummiyin, if, if you are not educated, then you know it comes as, as, as well with a whole lot of features of backwardness. I hope you agree with that. But in spite of that, Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to them. And the first thing the Prophet took very seriously was to rehearse on these people constantly the revelation of Allah as contained in the glorious Quran. That book is full of potency. That book can be very transformative. What the Muslims have not been doing is that we've not learned enough of the Quran, <coughs> not to even talk of disseminating enough of the Quran. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله this is a scripture which Allah describes as had we revealed it on the mountain, on the rock, you would have seen the rock crumble into pieces, crushed into pieces out of, that is to say, that even if hearts could be as hard as rock, if that heart had that hard heart can come into the right contact with the glorious Quran, then it becomes softened. People like Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu were never easy people. It was about the hardest against the Messenger of Allah sallam. It was prayer that was answered on him when the Prophet sallam asked Allah, Allahumma mansur al-Islam bi ahad al O oh Allah, help Islam with either of the two Umar and see the same Umar of the Jahiliyyah later was transformed to the Prophet that could have been after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can we get something there? Huh? Such a, a foremost antagonist of the Prophet, this we are seeing, recognizing the name of Allah on our great forebear al Khalifa al Rashid, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu is never to hope on any uh, ugly part of his history, but he was one of the companions that did uh, get involved in idolatry. He worshipped, he did all sorts of things that were practiced in Arabia. But the same person got transformed into the prophet that could have been after Muhammad. Can you get that? For the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, had Allah would uh, raise if Allah, any messenger after me, it could have been, it would have been uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. In not less than 13 instances, the Quran was revealed in support of the position of Umar. In some of such instances, even against that of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One marvelous thing about Umar was that he was about maybe the only person whose words and expressions Allah has also even adopted in revelation of the Quran. Some things were contained in the Quran that were revealed exactly in the tongue of Umar. What was the magic that turned Umar to this foremost friend of Allah? The Quran properly learned. The Quran properly administered. Yatlu alayhim ayati. Wa yuzakihim Reciting the Quran in our tradition here would always be for spiritual purposes. Some of us have very strictly observed schedule of Surah to Rahman or Surah to Waqiyah or Surah to Yasin that they must read between Maghrib and Isha, whatever. Whether it's Zanwaka, Zanwuwu or whatever, you know. May Allah provide for us all. Recite Zawaka for money, inshallah, may Allah provide. We are not saying anything is bad about that. But that's not the primary purpose of revelation of the Quran. The Quran is essentially a book of information, a book of guidance, a book to be assimilated and to be worked upon. Alif Lamim, Dalik al Kitabu la Raiba fi Hudan lil Muttaqin. So when you rehearse the Quran to the people, that is the the missing point in our society here. Sauka Quran. We want to recite the whole Quran. 
distributed to people in, in Juzu, 30 Juzu, <coughs> depending on how rich the person is. The average standard price is 1,000 Naira per Juzu. So for you to do Saukakuran, you must have a budget of at least 30,000 Naira. And if you are more rich, if you are richer, then you can place a bigger price. Such recitation of the Quran will not benefit anybody. And in most cases, injustice is also even done. No, 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 no. In fact, heresy is committed in the process. Blasphemy is committed in the process. Bastardization of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which can even graduate to kufu, is also committed. Because you can't deal with the Quran anyhow. These are some of the things we'll talk about in details. Even to the Messenger of Allah sallam, Allah instructed him, Rattil al qurana tartila. ولا لا تحرك لسانك لتعجل به لا تحرك نفسك لتعجل به لا تحرك لسانك لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآن move not your tongue in haste in order to hastily recite the Quran فإذا قرأناه فتبع القرآن when we recite it unto you محمد you don't have the leave to recite it anyhow you like. Fattabi' Qur'anahu. But you owe it a duty to recite it exactly as we have recited it unto you. Inna alayna jam'ahu wa Qur'ana up till the end. What we are saying here was that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam employed four instruments. One was that he rehearsed the Qur'an to them. Two, he also directed the Qur'an he was rehearsing to them to tazkiyah. What we mean by tazkiyah would mean sanctification. And by sanctification, we mean uh, to enhance the quality of souls and to also assist the soul. I mean, uh, no soul can ever be perfect. But what we are saying is your growth in faith should always be by you gradually coming in contact with the glorious Quran, increasing virtues, and then decrease in vices this is a journey an exercise that we all must be on and it's endless once you are still alive there must still be something to improve upon and there must still as well be something negative to handle or treat if the recitation and teaching of the quran is directly focused at this the muslims will be better people and that was the approach of the rasul he will not be telling them where Ankara is in the Quran. In Ankara Makum. Eh? He will not be finding Makis in the people of Ibadan mentioned in the Quran. Wallah is not a joking matter. I was at a khutbah. That was the time ever in my entire life that I could say my patience was subjected to the greatest of trials. I, I almost lost control. I almost caused. Uh, a, a crisis in, in a Juma congregation when the Imam on the member was saying that he was addressing the garden and he was telling them that let the Christians or the or the, or the idol worshippers not claim Fashola. It was Fashola that was the governor of Lagos State then. You know Fashola is idolatrous and um, whatever Baba Tunde is not also Christian and he's saying he, and he was reading Surah Al-A'la wa dhakaras marabbihi fasalla. That was what infuriated me. And that is Fashola in the glorious Quran. He read, he said that to Fashola on Hajj, somewhere and somewhere, and then he made a lot of money in dollars and pounds sterling, whatever, reals, Abi. That's the problem. Why you say key him? If our learning of the Quran is not directed at Tazkiyah, we mean by Tazkiyah, we should be refined coming in contact with the Quran. Our crudity should be refined. Our, our barbarity should also be addressed. A Muslim should also by conduct become more civil, more humane person. And we should see more humanity radiating in a, a believer simply because he has come in contact with the glorious Quran. Why use a key him? It should also be a book of reformation, transformation. Those are the issues. But we have to recite the Quran and it's only for spiritual purpose. We go to a salatu and we recite Yasin, blah, blah, without assimilating the message of Surah to Yasin. That's one of the most terrific Surah in the glorious Quran, which no believer should read properly without an impact. 
wal hikma alaykum assalam the third instrument is while the knowledgeable one knows as much as he knows as we believe that the prophet sallallahu wasallam was the most knowledgeable muslim of all ages not only of his time will anybody contest that here Yorubas would say in your call the momititi ko momi yo juta ni lo eh eyan to ku sinu odo won de la le to mo ya osoju oso lo if there were to be anyone to momi yo to tu wa ku sinu odo would never have been anybody other than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore nobody can ever be more muslim than Muhammad hmm? so that is the sheikh of all sheikhs the imams the imam of all imams what other titles you have? The Mukaddam of all Mukaddams. The Maulana of all Maulanas. But one problem that is here is the difference between Muhammad Sallallahu and many of the contemporary teachers. In order to keep congregation, in order to have uh, a big chunk of blind followers who could barely differentiate between their left and right, some scholars would even like to keep their folk in darkness so that they may never be able on their own to access any information and they will only rely on whatever they are told by their teachers. The Prophet ﷺ never did that. This now goes to transmitting the bulk of knowledge that Muhammad Sallam had he took his time to as well transmit those not, uh, that bulk of knowledge to people who are also willing and ready to accept and uh, receive it. Which means, if there is a dawah effort, that is also not about knowledge transmission. Um, when I'm saying knowledge transmission, it's not just for you to hear that the, what we are doing now can qualify as yatlu alayhim in the course of this discourse, inshallah, we'll be reciting verses of the Quran to make a point or the other. But beyond that, you have to as well go further to now make this audience entirely, without leaving anyone there, who would also be on a, in, an, enter into a path, seeking nothing in that path, then receiving as well in gradual doses this knowledge with a view to he as well being the rightful possessor of it. Are we there? Wa yu'allimuhumu al-kitaba. The Prophet ﷺ never left until he had taught people all that he knew of the Qur'an. And one of the things that can cause major crisis for scholars in the hereafter is to have departed the world without transmitting their knowledge. To die and buried in grave with knowledge not shared. Because knowledge is an amana. It's not meant for you to exalt yourself. It's, it's meant for you to be shared so that others can as well be like you. So that was what the prophet did. And he invested his time, his energy, especially in some young stars among his followers, even among his wife. What was the secret between the special affinity between Aisha and the Prophet and his other wives? Can anybody tell? Because Aisha was not a wife serving the Prophet domestically. She also complemented effectively the mission of Muhammad Sallallahu because he was one of her, his foremost students who was very much ready to receive knowledge, master it, and as well teach it to people. So as far as Muhammad was concerned, he had no other project than Islam. And his, his, his Islam is conveyed through what means knowledge dissemination. That is the... Okay? That verse is there. Am I correct? No. 108 no, no, no. is here. Surah 12, 108. Kul hadihi sabili. Say this is my way. Ad'u ilallah. I call on the way of Allah. Ala basira. On the platform of clear knowledge, clear insight. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن 
تبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين يا Yeah, Shah. 